Hi, I'm Dana Gould, and we are talking about Frankenstein Conquers the World. There it is on the late, great, famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. It is a 1965 Toho Studios production. When you get right down to it, it's just another Japanese retelling of a European Gothic novel involving Hiroshima and one of the actors from Rebel Without a Cause. Uh, it's directed by the great Ishiro Honda, with special effects by Aiji Subaraya, so its kaiju bona fides are intact. In 1960, Toho made a film called The Human Vapor, a story about a bank robber who can turn himself into a gaseous cloud. I know, but I only have a couple of minutes. Make your own jokes. Toho commissioned a sequel called Frankenstein vs. The Human Vapor, and that would become King Kong vs. Godzilla. King Kong vs. Godzilla was, pardon the pun, a monster hit, so they wrote a sequel, Frankenstein vs. Godzilla. And that became Godzilla vs. Mothra. But Toho still really wanted to make a Frankenstein movie, so in late 64, they announced Frankenstein vs. Baragon. It would also be announced under the title Frankenstein vs. the Giant Devilfish, and in America, Frankenstein Conquers the World. A film that is beautifully insane. Like all Japanese monster movies, the film starts in Nazi Germany, where a scientist has possession of Frankenstein's monster's heart. Fifteen years later, we see a weird kid running loose in a city. It seems that this little boy, who was seen around Hiroshima, literally grew out of Frankenstein's heart. And I don't mean it in the emotional sense. In this case, this boy is the son of Frankenstein. Or really, Frankenstein's monster's heart's son. So Frankenstein's monster's heart's son keeps eating and growing until he's 30 feet tall, at which point he escapes and runs off into the woods where he starts killing livestock, throws a tree at a house, and fights Baragon. This is right around the time you realize that Frankenstein's monster's heart's son looks a lot like Jerry Lewis in a Frankenstein sketch. The film ends with Frankenstein dispatching Baragon and being sucked into quicksand, but the American producer, Henry Saperstein, was really impressed with the scene in King Kong vs. Godzilla where he fought a giant octopus. So he said, do that again! So Toho reconvened and he fought a giant fake octopus. And then Henry Saperstein saw it and he said, ah, never mind. The film was released and it did well, so well in fact that a sequel went into production, which would be known in America as War of the Gargantuans. Mwah. Never before has the screen known such heart-stopping terror.